Hello, everybody. We are back. It is Trek on Tuesday. Aaron, I have something very exciting pulled up on my second screen, which is my phone. Um, it is us on Instagram live. Oh, very exciting. Happy New Year to everybody. And welcome to all of you watching on Instagram. That's exciting. Yeah. Shout out to Lordy and Jamie. Boy Scout Memes is watching us. All right. For awesome. now. We love that. <laughs> Um, yeah. Thanks, y'all, for joining in. Uh, I'm just watching the, the the viewers roll in. But we're also on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on YouTube. I mean. We're everywhere. We're you just everywhere. can't avoid us. We're everywhere. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. glad that we're hitting all these channels today because we have a topic that is like, it, it always has mass appeal. And I have to say, a lot of times we talk about this subject and we get a lot of feedback that's like, oh, you're too late for our pack. This year, I think mm -hmm. we're going to hit it before most of your Pinewood Derby races. Yes, I, I was just thinking the same thing. If there was ever a topic that was worth sharing on all of our different social media channels, it would be this one. We're talking about the Pinewood Derby in general, but more uh, specifically, the actual process of building a car. What's great about this topic is people have opinions, as you, I'm sure you know, Gina. I've talked to people that say, you know, well, the science says this, and there's folks who have been doing it for years that say, oh, no, I don't think that's true. I've really found this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. We welcome your debate. Please post your strategies in the comments. We're going to talk today about, uh, so, you know, some, I think, common strategies that a lot of people think work. I would love to hear from the viewers if it works for them. Yeah. You know what's funny to me, to me, Erin, is that there is a lot of debate, but ultimately it's science. So there is something that there are things that work. They just yeah. do work. Yes. There's no arguing. There, it's science, baby. There, there are a few basic tenets, I think, that are most people agree on, I think, that are important. We're going to hit on those today. There are a few other things that maybe some people consider not quite as important, but can help. We're going to talk about yeah. those as well. And, uh, There's also and emerging techniques like uh, in the years since we've done these shows, just since we've done truck on Tuesday, there have been things that we've learned in the process. We learn about, you know, sometimes there is a pack that's super competitive and they're on the verge of some fine with derby technology that then like infiltrates the country. Which is great because that's basically how the Pinewood Derby itself started, Gina, as I'm sure you know, way back in the 50s. It was just some random idea out in California that a Cub Master had and look at it now. Everybody's doing it. Everybody does it. Even outside of scouting, people do versions of the Pinewood Derby. Um, we know that parents get really into Pinewood Derby. I know some of your packs do like adult parent races because so many of the moms and dads really want to get their hands on building a car. This is why it's a favorite subject for many people yeah. because it's relevant to Cub Scouts. It's very relevant to Cub Scouts. It's relevant to their parents. It's relevant to just basically anyone who has been in scouting, remembers their Pinewood Derby, enjoys talking about it, enjoys thinking back about it. Um, happy New Year to a lot of you guys who are rolling in, wishing us a happy New Year, very happy New Year. Behind the scenes, Brian's putting up some um, URLs on screen. Today's story, we're going to kind of whip through it, but it would be totally worth bookmarking and going back um, because it also has URLs in there. Like it, it basically just be a handy website to book or page to bookmark. There, got a lot of cool resources and yeah. There's lots of great Pinewood Derby content on scoutlife.org. We're just highlighting one of those stories today. But as Gina said, within this story, there's a lot of links. And Gina, I want to say one more thing about the Pinewood Derby in general. I've, I've had the opportunity to meet quite a few kids transferring uh, or crossing over from Cub Scouts into Scouts BSA. And there's two things that they miss about Cub Scouts. One is the low demo issue of Scout Life magazine. When they goes over, they get the high demo issue. They lose some of the comics, things like that. <laughs> and the second one is Pinewood Derby. I always said, oh, I guess that was my last Pinewood Derby. I mean, they really do. There are Scouts, BSA, age kids, venturers, uh, adults who um, – Miss the Pinewood Derby, and that's why, yeah, those open races, parents races, things like that are so much fun. Yeah, mass mass appeal. Um, looking ahead to, we're about to get into the to the tips that you guys are tuning in for. Um, I want to say a couple things. One, um, Aaron brought up a great point. We always collect photos of Pinewood Derby cars throughout the season, and then towards the end of Pinewood Derby traditional season, we go back and look at a lot of our cars. Org slash send photos. We want to see pictures of your car. Yours might be ready or yours might be about to be ready or it's going to be ready in a month or two or three. That's great. Another point of clarification, we treat this sometimes like everyone has Pinewood Derby races in 
January, February, and March. And that's really not the case. There are packs that have Pinewood Derby races all year, some in the summer, if you can believe it. So if you are not about to have your race, these points are still, actually, you can work like way, way, way ahead. Um, and we still want to see pictures of your car. So please submit those. You can submit them throughout the year. And then the other thing I want to say is I think, I mean, we're not fully, we don't have all fully booked, but we are planning to be at some Pinewood Derby races this season and do some live shows, hopefully from those uh, locations. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Dif different parts of the country do it different ways, you know, but we're hoping to attend one that's uh, in kind of, a, we'll just say a public area, right? It's out in the open where uh, a very popular area where a lot of people can stop by and just what's going on over there? I wonder. Oh, I go to this place race. all the time. Exactly. Yes, exactly. What a cool idea that is just a sort of a, uh, oh, it's almost like a recruiting way, right? What's going on here? Oh, Cub Scouts doing Pinewood Derby. No big deal. What's that all about? Well, let me oh just tell gosh, you about yes. it. Exactly. Yes. Great point. If you're a leader watching this or a parent watching this, I know that there is a um, like Cub Scout Pinewood Derby campaign piece on the, the uh, BSA brand center. You can use if you want to talk about how to make this an active recruiting event or you host it in a place where it can be a passive recruiting event. People mm -hmm. are just going to see, you know, your Cub Scouts racing cars or they're going to want to take part. And then also, if you're watching this, you know, Cub Scout, you know, Cub Scout family, new Cub Scout family that they, you know, like if they're going to be involved in Pinewood Derby at all this year, please tag them in the comments. This is a really important show for them. I think anybody would be very appreciative of getting tips on, especially if this is yeah. their first year of the Pinewood Derby. Yeah. First time racers are always interesting. Uh, they're, they're very much like the cars themselves. You know, they're just like soft pits of clay that can be molded and <laughs> molded. shaped as you, as you want them to. Exactly. It's I, really scary. I did that. Year. Yes, I did that back in the day. I mean, me and some friends of mine all went through it together. What are we going to do here? We got to figure this out. You know, you've got young kids. They were tiger cubs at the time. You and, feel uh, unqualified. Yeah. Yes, and yes, exactly. That's like, We've well, got you. It's a race car yes. and you're like. How do I do that? We've got you covered. Well, I have a screwdriver. Well, that works. <laughs> yes, it's got a <laughs> screwdriver and a saw. What do I do with that? Exactly. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk speed tips. Um, if you have questions as we go through this, there's no question. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, there's no question. That's not appropriate. We'll let you know, <laughs> collect yourself. There's no question. Only a bad question is the question you don't ask for this one. So feel free to ask any question. The weather is very dry down here in Texas. So sometimes it gets our throat nice and scratchy. Uh, ask your questions. And, and anything that we say today, we have some tips. If you disagree, feel free to let us know if you found something else that works. Yes. I was going to say, if you have a question about like how to do something, Please comment. If yes. you don't have power tools, you don't know how to cut yes. down a block of wood. Yes. Comment. We have ideas. So. Yes, we do. We Yes, we do. We've got plenty of ideas. But there are some basic guidelines for Pinewood Derby design that we'd like to share today. Gina, why don't you go first? Okay. This is one I actually, I, I didn't know. Right. You really, again, if you've never done this before, this one is definitely one you wouldn't think of necessarily. And I, of course, I got a story on this one, but avoid pointed noses. This didn't come up for me. I've only built a couple of Pinewood Derby cars, but this didn't come up for me because of the way I built it. But this makes perfect yes. sense. Avoid a pointed nose. A pointed nose will make it difficult for your Pinewood Derby to car, Derby car to rest on the pin at the starting gate. Does that this make sense? A, absolutely. This is a mistake that a lot of first timers make <laughs> naturally because it seems like a good idea to have a pointed nose. You want to make a car aerodynamic. We're going to get to that in just a second. So it just makes sense that a, certainly a child or an adult would be like, hey, well, let's have a pointed nose. There's a very practical reason why that's not a good idea. Almost every Pinewood Derby race I've seen, the starting line is a little pin like that. And if the nose doesn't sit right, uh, you could be at a disadvantage. It can turn your car a little bit of an angle, uh, cost you a few precious seconds coming out of the gate, or worst case scenario, it might just simply not work at all, right? Right. BSA Memes asks, is the wedge truly the best Design that could never be answered on best. It depends on what Literally. you're what you're aiming for. But I would say, you know, like all things equal, it's going to be it all things equal. Okay, you've done everything else the same. It's going to be probably slightly faster than a block, but it probably isn't going to come into play if you haven't done any of these other things. I would recommend Mark Roper's video for you. He addresses that, um, and you can see that online on Scout Life, right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, another aspect of building your Pinewood Derby car that you want to think about is weight distribution. It, it matters 
whether the car is heavy in the front or heavy in the back. Uh, you want to leave ample wood in the rear of the Pinewood Derby car so you can place additional weight there. Concentrate the majority of the weight in the rear for optimal performance. Um, I've Again, I've talked to some folks who swear that they disagree with that. They don't think it's a bad thing to put the weight in the front. I think everything that I've read says, and this is like you said, you know, science says that putting weight towards the rear is the way to go. But I've seen some parents with some really fast cars who would disagree with that. But I would love to know what our viewers think. But I still think most of um, most of the science that we say suggests that you put it towards the rear. You know, you are allowed too, if you have the time, some, so many parents are going to be like, ha. Huh, and so many parents are going to be like, yeah, of course we do that every year. Um, you are allowed to build two cars and just do your own independent race. You can test, buy, your, test your science. You can have a hypothesis and test it. You can buy extra Pinewood Derby kits at your local scout shop or online. Do some experimentation. Race Absolutely. the faster one. If that's exactly. What you, yeah. exactly. I got to say, when I made a car with my dad, we made three and raced them and then raced the fastest. And that's all. You know, it's helpful. <laughs> That's awesome. But I got to agree with you. I think that weight placement combined with this next point to me seem like the most important parts if you're going for yeah, speed, right. maximum weight. This yeah. is make or break. If you've done everything else, you want to aim for the maximum allowable weight, which is typically five ounces at most races. If your car falls short of this weight, strategically add coins or other weights to meet the requirement. We don't make this clear enough. Usually, as far as, as I know, every single pack has a weigh-in. And after weigh-in, they let you adjust your car before you submit it. So you are able to add weight to get it right at that five ounces or take an ounce away if it went overweight. Do make your, you know, plan your weight strategically. I think that's another very common mistake that first-timers make. They just don't really realize that how important that is. They're focused on designing the car, painting the car, and making it look cool. And they don't realize how much faster it can go if you add enough weight. Usually you have to add weight to get it up to, it's usually around five ounces is the max. Check your pack's rules to be sure. It can be as simple as scotch taping some coins to the bottom of the car or the top of the core, or there's weights you can buy, again, from Scout Shop that are part of the design that look like an engine or things like that. Uh, lots of different options there. Um, another thing that, again, a lot of people don't even think of, uh, we call it in this article, clarity in orientation. Sometimes with these really creative cars, it's not clear which end is the front. And again, a very common mistake for, for new families to make. You turn your car in at most races. You're going to turn your car in to the folks running the race. They're going to be the ones that put it on the track. You don't want anything to leave anything up for a discussion like which way does this car go? Because again, if you listen to the weight distribution discussion we had a few seconds ago, it's important. You might have your weight towards the back, but someone put your car towards the front. A lot of Pine Road Derby races, they stamp a little number on the car, a little sticker with a card number on it. Make sure that's in the front. Make sure there's some sort of indicator, if it's not obvious, which end is the front of the car? It seems so basic, you know, but it's a very common mistake when you think about it. Some kids get Never really of it. creative with their ideas. And if you look at the car and it looks great, and then you, but if someone hasn't seen it before, they go, now, when, which end is, is the front again? I like such a brilliant thought. And you know, like a, a good note for race organizers too. So when you're staging those cars, you might want clarification when the Cub Scouts checking in their car to say what's the front or back. And then you set it in a way where whoever is going to be placing it on the track knows. Yeah. Just to, you know, double cover your bases. Yes. Um, this last point goes along with BSA means question, aerodynamic design. Select a design that facilitates smooth airflow over and around the Pinewood Derby car body. Pinewood Derby cars with aerodynamic profiles go faster. Yeah, Rusty but says Again, it has to be all things equal. Because I'm going to say you can make yes. an aerodynamic car and not place the weight strategically, not max out your weight. That block's going to be it. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, uh, Rusty says the wedge is a safe standard design. I agree. Uh, the wedge is faster than a, than a block. I don't know that the wedge is that much faster or different than any other aerodynamic design, but it is certainly easier and a quick way to do it if you're just interested in getting the car done. Uh, and like Gina said, it's all things equal, right? An aerodynamic car with the weight placed in the right place and a few of the things we're going to talk about in general is going to be faster than just a brick. Aaron, I always also think of like the single parent who lives in an apartment, doesn't have a garage, yeah. doesn't necessarily have the time to go bring their kid over to somewhere with power tools. You can go buy the wedge car 
You yep. can order the wedge car online. It's already cut for you. It is safe to race like that. Yep. I mean, I you don't, you wouldn't have to carve it at all. Yes. Yeah, so I had several families back when I was a Cub Scout leader. So I, I mean, I just don't have time to build a car. What can I do? You can order a wedge, buy a wedge online or at your local scout shop. It's ready to go. Maybe throw some paint on there or stickers or something like that. And make you it can nice, polish the axles if you're allowed yeah, you and place the weight that. and that car will be fast. Car will do absolutely fine. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Okay. We're moving on to another section of this really awesome roundup of tips. And it kind of gets a little more into the nitty gritty of building your car. This first, um, this first idea is one I don't think that you would no come up with naturally unless you're in the realm of Pinewood Derby. Yeah, I, I never did this, but uh, mm. we, me and my son built five Pinewood Derby cars together. We never did this, but there are a lot of people that swear by it. We're talking about baking the block of wood. Yes, this is a thing. Uh, you veterans, I'm, of course, are familiar with this. You newcomers may not be. Put the, the block car, before you do anything else, the uncut car, the block of car in an oven, we suggest 250 degrees for two hours. It removes moisture. It makes the car lighter. Why would you want to make the car lighter, Gina, when you're going to add weight later? Well, what this does, this allows greater weight distribution. We talked about uh, putting the weight towards the back. So the idea is you make this block as light as possible. So then you can add weight where it needs to go and not have inefficient weight or wasted weight at a different part of the car where you don't want to do it. I'd be interested to see what people say about this, Gina. I've never done it. I, my brain can't get around that. It makes that big a difference, but some people swear by it. Uh, yeah, I have no idea how much of a difference it made. I did this with my cars. It's just a testament to how specific people want to get with the weight. They want to suck the moisture, which can't be that much, right? Out of this already dry. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, it, it's done. Again, we're not telling Cub Scouts to turn on their oven and stick those in there. We're saying work with your parents, do it yes. the right way. It's a relatively low temperature that you're baking at. Do it the right way. Don't start a fire. Um, yes. Crafting your design is another point. Um, you want to outline your Pinewood Derby car on paper, cut it out, and affix it to the wood block. That's what you kind of use as your guide to cut your car What's also really cool is that scoutlife.org has some templates you can use where you can download them, put them up on your, you know, print them, put them on your car and carve that way. I also know that there are some different Pinewood Derby kits you can buy, like light and sound kits and things that come with templates. So you can like cut your car to look like a fire truck or a ice cream truck, those kind of things. So there's a lot of ways to make this happen. Yeah, crafting the design is a great opportunity for the kids to be creative uh, with a piece of paper and a pencil to draw out the shape of the car that they would like to see. They're not going to do the cutting themselves, right? So getting them to draw it and craft it out so that an adult can do the cutting itself is a great way to make sure that, you know, that they're involved and that they have a say in um, what it looks like. Um, speaking of cutting the design, another thing to do is um, uh, when, you, when you cut the car, start with a rough cut of the design uh, using a coping saw with the help of a responsible adult, a power tool, if you have access to that kind of thing, cut out the rough shape of your Pinewood Derby car. Uh, important to keep in mind, this is not going to be what it looks like in the final product, or it doesn't have to be what it looks like in the final product, unless you just want it to be. It could yeah, be, if you don't want it to be, it. but you can, yes. And actually, Gina will go and say the next step is to actually shape the car. You start off with a rough cut. The next step is shaping the car using sandpaper. This is another thing that children can do. Cub Scouts can use sandpaper. I used to, Jenna, take sandpaper and duct tape it to the floor of my back patio, to the ground. And then my son would rub the mm. car on the sandpaper on the ground so he didn't have to worry about Smart. doing the work. Exactly. It makes it a little bit easier. They can sort of get their weight into the car, sand it, make it nice and smooth that way. That's a great role that a uh, you know kid can do. Uh, and they're probably not allowed to use like a power tool, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you at home may be thinking you just told me a wedge is good enough. It still is. We are just giving you some ideas for how you yes. can shape your car. Another idea is if you are kids, heart, your scout's heart is set on a certain shape and you don't have power tools. Maybe you don't feel comfortable using the little saw thing. Um, you can go to uh, most uh, hardware stores, even big brand hardware stores will help you cut your car for you. If you bring that template in that maybe you're, your scout has design they can help you cut it to that size um and then also you maybe sh should check with your pack check with your den leader they often have like build days where other parents will help you and uh, scouts are all good enough sports no one's going to sabotage you there 
Yeah, Jeremy's offers a, a Pinewood Derby workshop cut night, which is a great thing to do. If your Cub Scout pack doesn't have one already, talk to an adult about it. Most uh, grown-ups who have tools, who are good at them, like to share them. They like to use those tools. And we had a we had a dad in our pack who was just wonderful, and you could just bring the design to him, and he would cut it for you. And uh, nobody got their fingers cut or anything like that. It was a great method to do. If your Cub Scout pack doesn't have one of those already, definitely worth bringing up at your next committee meeting. Somebody in, in the pack is going to be willing to do it. Or like Gina said, a local hardware store, you know, they see it as future customers. When they see a kid walk in there needing help, that's a future customer. They're most likely very, very willing to help out. Absolutely. Um, you can check out a bunch of Pinewood Derby cars for inspiration by heading to that link at the bottom of the screen. Now, this next part we're getting into, this is where I will say, check with your pack on the rules of your race. Because as soon as I bring this up, as many races as I've heard do allow these things, I there's always somebody who says, our race doesn't allow this. So make yep. sure you know the rules before you do it. But these are some things that can really speed up your car. And if, you're, if your race allows it, you want to know because you don't want to be the one that didn't know, didn't do it, and feels like, oh, my car was perfect otherwise. Um, axle and wheel alignment. And this is usually allowed. You can make sure they're you know perfectly straight. There's a little kit you can get from Scout Shop that straightens your axles. Or there are other ways to do that. You can Google it. You can look up on scoutlife.org. This is the one. Consider a three-wheeler. You can raise one wheel about a sixteenth of an inch so it never actually touches the track. This is big because it's less friction. Again, I'm going to refer you to that Mark Rober video. He's a, a former NASA scientist, and he talks about why this makes a big difference. It definitely makes a big difference. Um, and then the other portion of this is you can extend the wheelbase. You can maximize the distance between the front and rear wheels. Again, make sure this is allowed in your race. And then I don't see this one on here, but I know that we have a really good video on it. So I want to make sure I call out polishing your Pinewood Derby car axles and wheels. This is down at the bottom of the screen. Again, I think that this is allowed in every race and can make a really huge difference because when you get those Pinewood Derby kits, they come with basically nails or your axles and they can be kind of gritty. They're like, they have all these imperfections. And if you go from coarser to finer um, sandpaper, you can kind of polish those out fully, make them real smooth. And you'll notice the difference if you spin the wheel on an axle that's been polished versus not, you're looking for it to just kind of spin on its own for a really long time. Yep. Yep. Um, the, the three wheeler and the extending the wheelbase are two things that might not be allowed. That's the most common ones out of all the advice we give on scoutlife.org. Those are the two common ones that sometimes aren't allowed. Be sure and check your rules. A lot of packs choose to use the rules uh, that come from their district because they want to send, send cars to their district race. So those rules kind of trickle down because they don't want a kid to make a car qualify for their district race only to have that car not be eligible. So be sure and check that. Um, but yeah, heartbreaking. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But graphite, uh, that's something I don't think really think that's debatable. That makes a huge difference. Like Gina said, you can hold that nail with the wheel on it and spin it. And with the right amount of graphite, it will just spin, spin, spin. Uh, if there's no graphite at all, that's a great experiment. You spin it and it stops usually relatively quickly. Uh, and another great thing, uh, something again, a lot of first time car builders don't realize the idea of, of aligning the wheels. There's like tools you can buy to do that. But really, you put the, once the car is done, or once you think it's done, you put it on the floor, you push it straight. And if it bends, I was amazed the first time we built a car and I pushed it and it just made like a right turn. That's that son of a gun just, just turned because the wheels weren't aligned. It's pretty mm. easy to fix that uh, with some very simple tools that you probably already have. But that's a big deal. You don't want it to, to bend uh, as it's going down a track to try to it's bend. It's going to be rubbing rub up against exactly. the rail. More friction? No we good. Just, uh, science does prove that friction is bad. It slows things down. I mean, it's bad if you're looking for a fast car. We're glad to have it in a lot of situations, like when we're slowing our car down, a real car. And now in that case, it's a life <laughs> Friction yes. is good. Exactly. Hey, Aaron, why see Charles? Um, he, he, we've got a three-year champ back-to-back -back in okay. Pinewood Derby in the house. And you know how he did it? Now, what he says, what he credits it towards. Yes, what? Graphite. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I think that's, that's, that's critical. Uh, most races don't let you use like liquid lubricants because it gets gross and nasty and drips everywhere. But bra graphite, pretty easy to clean up. It's this very, very thin, uh, slippery. I don't know what it is. Graphite. It's graphite. Uh, but it, it works. It, it works amazing. Right with it? it seems. Yeah. It seems, yeah. That's actually is kind of what it seems like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, easy to clean up. Uh, and uh, boy, it makes a huge difference on your wheels for sure. 
Aaron, do you know the most important part of Pinewood Derby? Uh, I have a guess. Can I guess? Yeah. Just have fun. That's exactly right. Ultimately, yeah. that is what it's about. You have a, you know, you got to let your scout lead, especially yep. in terms of design and what their desired outcome is. And they may say, I don't care about speed at all. I want to have the most amazing Pikachu car ever. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's aerodynamic. I don't care what the wheels, what the axle deal is. I mean, that's what it's about. Have fun. There's a design competition too. That could be your yep. goal. Right. Um, you may, they're as into it as you are. So are a lot of other people. You may not win. That's okay. It's a great lesson. Yeah, exactly. There's always next year. Yes, it's a great lesson. And I encourage all parents watching. Uh, there might be, sometimes we get parents that are competitive. I know that's pretty rare, but sometimes we get parents who really, really want to win. Like Gina said, let your child take the lead. Let them decide, hey, it's, trying to win is great. That's totally fun as long as your child is on board with it, right? They don't care about it. If they want to build an R2-D2 that stands up right and is not at all aerodynamic, you know what? Build an R2-D2. It's fine. Yes. And to model that dynamic, because Aaron and I have an annual debate on this. You know, I think Pinewood Derby is so much about working with your parent. And I think it is okay to bring ideas to your scout and say, you know, they, I read that this could really make your car fast if that's something yeah. you want to do. That's one thing what I think is acceptable. But I think if your scout is saying, no, I don't care about that. Like, I want to I want to paint it. I want to paint it now. Well, I don't know. Whatever dynamic you have with your kid, I think it's about listening to your scout and making it uh, collaborative for sure. Yeah, my son, you know, as he got older, I, I sort of expected him to do a little bit more work on the car. When he was a Tiger Cub, I didn't expect him to do that much, right? And so it's probably not a coincidence that his cars got slower as he got older. And I talked to him, you know, hey, if you want it to go faster, this is what you have to do. And he said, I'm not interested in doing that. Fine. Yeah, fine. I didn't care either. Fine. You don't have to do it. So it, it actually worked out great. We had a great time. And, and like most Cub Scouts, he has wonderful memories of the cars we made together. We still have him, Gina. Oh, I should have grabbed him for the show. We'll, we'll do more Pinewood Derby shows. Another yes. thing is don't, I would say don't project the experiences you have with your scout and your kid onto others. Yeah. Maybe you know the dynamic you have with your kid, you know the level of effort that they put in or what their capabilities are, but you can never look at a car and say a scout did not design it. You just do not know. We know scouts Absolutely. are just outstanding and phenomenal. We post pictures and, and sometimes and people say a scout didn't make that. And right. then the mom will come in with all these pictures to be like, yeah. The heck like, they did. Yeah. Yes, it, exactly. And, you know, Pinewood Derby cars are supposed to be built in partnership with a parent or, or adult or whatever. You're supposed to do that. It's totally fine and totally cool. Some of them are going to look amazing. And that that's great. That's cool. Oh, also, that's how you learn, Aaron, because it's like I was thinking as I was saying all this, wow, it's amazing. Like it finally just hit me. Like, it's amazing. I know all this because I'm not really very sciencey in my brain. The reason I know this is because my dad said it to me and I heard it and the process of working with him on it. And now I understand it. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. And that's true. Like for speed secrets, it's also true. You know, we're not going to get into the details of today about how to paint it. But right. There's all kinds of tips about how to paint the car and how to apply finish and how to make it glossy and things like that. That you can yes, do like if you choose our to. creative directors, I think of them building their cars with their kids. And that would be a whole nother experience. You know, I can't imagine what their kids are learning in terms of like the artistic input into building a car. Yes, yes, absolutely. Hey, we got to share this comment from Rose and Chris. Their son is joining this Friday for the first time. Welcome. That's so cool. Six years old. Six. You're going to participate in the Pinewood Derby oh, this year. You're getting roped that in if so you're not cool. already. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Welcome. Uh, should tune into future episodes, uh, guys, for, for, for updates. We're here. We're here every week. Yes, we are here every Tuesday. We have some exciting trick on Tuesdays coming up and we will be here on Fridays for Cub Chat Live. Um, we're probably getting a lot of Cub Chat viewers or Cub Scout viewers right now. We talk about leaders and parents then. And we're hoping to be at some Pinewood Derby races live this season. So we'll keep you uh, posted. You know, some people say that like last week was the most wonderful time of the year. I think this is the most wonderful time of the year. It's Pinewood Derby season over the next few months. Everybody have a great time at your races. Do your best. That's always our motto. Just do the best that you can. Absolutely. Great note to end on. Thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. Happy New Year. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody.